Ron Lesh, very excited to have you here from BGL Corporate today, uh, talking about BGL, uh, the super fun world and the whole cloud technology world. A uh, few questions uh, as we get into it. First of all, let's have a look at, um, in the trustee area with super funds, what is the whole technology space going to do uh, for them? Well, I think from a, any person who has their own self-managed super fund wants to get information more often. So that instead of getting their, the results of their super fund from their accountant at the end of each year, they want to be able to get the data, uh, the data, the information about their fund, where their investments sit. They want to get this every single day. So they can go in, they can look at their, their balance, their members' balance and know where they are. And that's what the cloud allows you to do with, uh, with uh, self-managed super. And that's where BGL is, is heading and, and is in fact at the moment with the, the product offerings that we have for our clients. So are you saying that as a, as a I have a, a super fund, uh, are you saying that I could have like for example through my mobile device or laptop or any internet connection, uh, real time performance, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, we're talking about real time performance, daily performance, daily. And, and, and that is available now um, through the software tools that we have available to, to our clients uh, and, and we have many, many clients who are using this at the moment. So it, it's part of the process. The other way that it can help is to cut down on the paper that people have to handle for soft money super funds. So the whole process of getting documentation, putting all that together, can be done by both the trustee and the accountant together. And again, all of that can be automated and built in with digital signing so there's no paper to sign as well. Okay, so Ron, you started this business in the late 80s. Uh, prior to that, you were partner in accounting firm, I believe. Correct. And uh, no doubt you've seen uh, how accountants are using your technology and how they're changing. Yes. Uh, what do you think is going to happen with the technology changes at the client end, being the trustee, the SME, the high net worth individual, yeah. and the interaction they have with that with the accounting firm? Uh, well, what changes do you think are going to happen there? Well, I think the, the there is the ability now for the for the client to know where he is at any point in time in terms of his investments and his self and super fund. And that should really present an opportunity for the accountant to assist his client in better uh, planning, uh, better investing, better handling his investments and his wealth than what is happening at the moment. At the moment it seems to be very much stopgap every quarter, regular reviews, but not really looking at things as they're happening on a daily basis. And that's where the cloud could really assist in, in making all of that possible. So does that mean that even in the super fund area, the accountant uh, can actually add more value or they just can look at some data like they've been previously looking at 12 or 18 months later? Yeah, well, look, they can certainly add value because the, from, from a number of perspectives, from a from client's perspective, they can add value because they can tell their client at any point in time where they're at in terms of their contributions for a particular year uh, and uh, pensions being paid for the year, whether they've paid enough, whether they've paid too little, all, all of those things. So from the client's perspective, they can help their client a lot. From the investment perspective, uh, as we know, many of, our, uh, many of our clients now are involved in providing investment advice or some sort of investment advice. It gives them the opportunity to advise on things more often and in a, in a better way than they're doing at the moment. So they can look and see if maybe their shares, is just as an example, their CBA shares are now become 8% or 9% of the portfolio because the share price has gone up significantly. Um, they can then go back to the client and say, look, we think you should sell some of these, take some profits, invest in, some, in something else so that we can keep the portfolio in balance. You, it's hard to do that when you don't have the data available every day. So what we're saying is that, um, or what you're saying is that the accountant can actually be far more relevant and really step into those trusted advisor's shoes that they have the title of, but maybe they don't have the tools in the past to actually do that. Well, that's exactly right. And with the, the limited um, uh, licensing that's coming in for accountants now, uh, it's going to create a huge opportunity for accountants to be able to provide much more holistic advice than they've providing previously. So even though they, most accountants we, we don't think will actually uh, get a full uh, financial services license and want to be involved with product or recommending specific investments, they will be able to offer holistic advice and advice over the portfolio in general. So we think this, by providing this information, to both the client and to, to the accountant every day, it gives the accountant the ability to do this. At the moment, they, they find it more difficult to do it. 
Well, this sounds like a you know, an awesome opportunity for, for, the, for the accounting firm uh, where when I've interviewed other technology related people, particularly in the cloud accounting space, the message seems to be our tool, our solution will help free up capacity and make you more efficient. Um, what you're saying is your tool is going to actually enable you, accountant, to add more value to the, to the situation. 100% correct. And it's a combination of both. Yes, it will provide more efficiency, but it will also give you the ability to advise better. And, you know, if we look at the accountants that are uh, the, uh, clients that are out there, a lot of them have got a wealth of business experience and they're really so busy doing the stuff that they don't really want to do, the compliance stuff, rather than advising their clients. This is an opportunity for them to step back, automate their processes, use the cloud for automation, and then use the time that they've got to actually help their clients and to get more value for their clients, uh, to give their clients more value from their services. Awesome. So really, this could transform uh, the performance of an accounting firm, provided they actually add some value mm. and then price that you know, services appropriately, Yes, but it could really transform the way they operate. Yes, it certainly can. And I think that's in the way of the future, if we're looking to how, or where we're going and where we're going to be in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years, we want to get the compliance and the the day-to-day, the, -day, the bookkeeping, the easy stuff, we want to automate all of that. You don't want people sitting there punching transactions or coding transactions. You want that process to be automated and you want that in any accounting system, not just in, in the software that we're providing, but you want that in any accounting system people are using. So the accountant really can get the figures and focus on providing their client with information, with um, add-on services to actually improve the way the client runs their business. So right now, just sort of uh, take a little step sideways. Sure. Right now, compliance is a very labour-intensive um, job project in a, an accounting firm. Very much so. Where do you see the future of compliance going with what the way it's done today? Yeah, well, I think that there's, there's definitely two or three different schools of thought about which way compliance is going. One school of thought is that you ought to try and automate everything and all the compliance work or the, the not really the compliance work, but the, the review of the, of the activities of the, of the business or the super fund is handled by the accountant here. So you get away from doing the hack work, the, the actual punching of transactions. The other thought is to move a lot of the punching of transactions and all of that sort of stuff offshore and have that done by, um, by, by companies maybe in India or in the Philippines or wherever, so that they do the, the hack work and all you end up with is the, is the fees or is, the, is, the, is the, the end result of the transactions that have happened and you, you can then use that information to uh, help your clients. So there's two schools of thought which way you can go. The third school of thought is that people just continue doing it the way they have. One of the problems of people continuing to do it the way they have is I think it, it means that they're spending too much time worrying about the numbers and not enough time or worrying about the compliance, but not enough time actually worrying about the numbers and helping their clients with the numbers. And that's where I think that as a, as a profession, I think that's the direction we need to move. As in stop overstressing and you know, having too much labour on the compliance, Automate that by whatever means, either outsource or get savvier technology and process. Correct. And then based on that data, offer some real value, like what you're talking about with super funds, but also on the profit loss of the balance sheet as well. Correct. Uh, on all of the, all of the um, accounts that they're dealing with. Um, it doesn't just have to be for super funds. It could be super funds. It could be SMEs. It could be uh, any business that they're dealing with at all, even individuals in better, in better planning, tax planning for individuals and things. The whole, uh, whole idea of using technology to actually give you information rather than actually spending your time working to get the technology right or to get the data into the technology, that's where I think the, the, key, the key is going forward in the future. So what's going to happen to those firms that attempt to do it the way they've been doing it? Look, uh, I suppose that there's always going to be a percentage of firms that aren't going to move quickly to update and to upgrade. But in the end, I think a lot of them are just going to be forced in that direction because they won't be able to compete. If you've got Blogs & Co down the road who are offering daily reporting to all their SMEs, uh, management advice at the end of each month, um, reporting on all their investments every day, and you've got Smith & Co up the other end of the road who are doing it annually and doing their accounts for their super fund in April the next year, um, 
clients are going to look at that and cl clients talk and they'll see, well, look, these guys just aren't providing the services. So they're going to come back to Smith & Co and say, look, guys, either you guys can provide me the service that I really need or I'll have to go to someone else. So is technology driving that, marketing driving that, the internet driving that, or client demands driving that? I don't or a think combo? It, I, I think it's a combination. I don't think client demand is driving it that much at the moment because most people who've been going to accountants have been used to the same level of service and the same type of services for many, many years. So the accountants have sort of said, well, that's really great. I can continue to provide you with this, uh, these services. I continue to make my money. I continue to run my business. But what's happening is the younger people are saying, well, hang on a minute. There's a lot of technology out there that can help me and help you drive both of our businesses better and help you to provide me with better advice as, a, as an SME or a trustee of a super fund. So I th there's a little bit of demand coming from the client. There is certainly demand within the profession because of the shortages of staff to improve efficiency within organisations. That's another driving, a driving point. There's also a lot of people out there, I suppose, selling the concept of this or these are the stuff this is the stuff that you can do. Some firms are listening, some firms are not listening. Some are dipping their feet in the water, others are sitting back and waiting to see what's happening. But I, I think over the next five to 10 years, this is going to change. Uh, and it's gonna change because the major suppliers are moving more stuff to the cloud. They will move stuff eventually to the cloud properly. So it won't be desktop applications talking to the cloud, it will be cloud applications. So as that starts to happen and people see the, the benefits of getting the data and the information they want every day on any device, anywhere, at any time, I think things will start to move. And, and that's really where it is going. They're not there yet. The, uh, the, some of the technology is there. You do have you know, organisations that can do that, but there aren't very many at the moment. As Morph's product becomes available that allows you to do that, I think in the future that uh, we will see more people move into these sort of technologies. Well, you've just got to put in the pot what's happened with social media interactions the last five years. A groundswell happened mm. and, and, and you know, one in seven people are connected somehow to a social mm. media platform. And that, that happened because um, technology companies provided that but the population said, yeah, that's a good idea, I like that as well. Mm. And a bit like uh, your two analogies of Blog and Smith, that you know, down the road I can get a better service, could be for the same price, mm. just because that firm's far more efficient, but I get a better service and better help for me. Correct. So from, from what you just said, Ron, this is gonna happen whether the accounting firms like it or not. Oh, look, I think the, the progress is happening. If you, if you went back to 20 years or 25 years ago when I was in practice, um, people were just using computers to do financial statements. They now use, they then started using spreadsheets, they then started using word processors, they then started updating the accounting systems to provide more information. We've now moved to the web. We're seeing these generational changes of things happening. And, and that's, that generational change, that will continue to happen. I, I think if we're sitting here in 10 years from now, we'll all be saying, what was a desktop? Why do we ever have this data on the desktop in the moment? Exactly. Uh, you know, why, aren't we, why weren't we sharing it now? Uh, and really, I suppose the reality is the systems weren't available to do it uh, and, and still really aren't there yet. You've got a couple that are, but a lot that aren't. Um, the hardest thing for accountants is change. It's changing from where they are to moving to the next step. The younger guys coming through are all want to move. So as there's a change in the demographics and the practices, there's also a change in the way the technology is used in the practices. And I think that's all moving, all moving together. Um, you talk about social media, you know, we've got Facebook now is the, is the third largest country in the world. Um, so the whole idea of using social media and using, I suppose, um, the whole concept of, of, deal, of, of comparing your results and looking at your results compared to other people is something that hasn't been really taken, taken on board that much. There are countries that are doing it, there are uh, places where we're moving to having financial statements normalised so we can compare very easily, but that's the other advantages coming through with, with web. If you look at it as a, as a simple example, in Singapore they introduced reporting for, for companies, so everybody reports in, a, in XBRL, so it's all reported electronically, so they can provide actual real data as to where each industry is at any point in time. We've sort of got that with the tax office here, but we really don't have as much information as, as is publicly available overseas. But that's all the benefits of using the data 
allowing people to see where do you sit in comparison to your industry, let's benchmark you properly, let's do all that sort of thing, that sort of stuff as well, and to do it automatically and monthly and regularly, not at the end of the year or eight months after the end of the year. So how long do you think in years from now that compliance as we know it with all these technology related companies and publishing companies as well, really looking to commoditize that function so the firm's more efficient. How long before you you, do you think, because you're working with what, 5,000 firms you told me mm -hmm. right now? You know, so you've seen a lot of action out there. How long before there starts to be a revenue decline in compliance with what we know today? I think we're already seeing a revenue de decline in compliance. Um, we've got more compliance work to do than we've ever done before, but we're having more pressure on fees for compliance work. Um, and that's why the outsources have, uh, have, have popped up why you've got work being done in India, work being done in other places, because people are saying, look, I'm getting a lot of pressure on my compliance fees, I need to reduce my cost of compliance. Um, the way to reduce your cost, and this is something I said this morning, it's not about software, it's about getting data. Mm. And one of the big issues that we've all had up till now is that to get data is not as easy as it should be. Um, if you're trying to get data from one spot or two spots, that's okay, but if you're trying to get data from 500 spots, it is difficult and we don't have the systems yet really in this country to do that. The other problem that we also have, or the other issue that we also have is the internet here is not good enough. No. Whether the NBN will fix that or not, uh, I, I don't know, but certainly we're at a point here where internet is just not good enough at the moment for, for running a lot of commercial activities. But, but that will be fixed though, no matter what the NBN or something. We, as a country, we have to fix that to remain relevant ourselves. Well, we would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, how many years have we been talking about good high-speed internet yeah. in Australia? And okay, we're, we're introducing the NBN, but we're still not going to have it in 10 years. And by no. the time that it's introduced it'll and available else. everywhere, it'll be old technology. Yeah. Um, so where, where are we actually planning for what's going to happen in 10 years from now? Well, and, that, uh, and that, that's a bit one of the big problems. And that brings us back to the accounting profession today, planning for what's inevitably going to happen. You know, what you're talking about with the, 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 pr the fee pressure on compliance, declining revenues in compliance, where most firms have 70 to 80% of their revenue tied up in mm. compliance, we've got a decline there, which could mean, you know, some firms go out of business. Yeah, uh, firms it, merge. Firms merge to get some scale, mm. uh, some massive changes, you know, and, and, you know, my terminology is remaining relevant, you know, so how, what does an accounting firm need to do to, to future-proof future their firm and remain relevant in the future? Well, I, I think accounting firms need to do the compliance, but their focus should be on the value-added services. It's, it's the figures that come out of the compliance that they should be using to help their clients build their businesses. Because if they help their clients build their businesses, then that will build their business, build the accountant's business as well. And that's really the key. And that's, I suppose, in some respect, the business that BGL is in is trying to help our clients to build their businesses so that we can build our business as well. And that's where I think accountants need to go, go in the future. I think if they're going to be relying on compliance work in 10 years or 15 years from now, yeah, there's going to be heaps of compliance work around, but somebody's always going to be able to do it cheaper than you can. Mm. Um, and that's not where accountants really should be focusing, I think, their skills. Well, I think this is why, you know, uh, we're so closely aligned here, Ron. You're focused on the superannuation area um, for advisory, uh, where we're focused on the P&L and the balance sheet area for mm. advisory. You know, so yeah. we we're talking about a set of numbers, you know, from different sources, hey, accountant, add some value and, and build a better business, yeah. really help your clients. Yeah, and, and that's, what, that's what it's all about. And, and as you say, your business, your business is helping the accountants to add the value to their practices. Uh, our business is trying to do very similar. We're trying to help them to add value as well through technology and through using technology better. Well, Ron, thank you so much. Insightful uh, few minutes. Uh, all the best for the future. And no doubt uh, the 5,000 firms will keep on growing. Uh, but maybe we need a big stick to get them into gear to go a bit faster. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome.